Good evening, everyone, councillors, officers, members of the public. Welcome to this meeting of the Southern Development Control Committee. Uh, before we start, can I remind you of the fire regulations which are on the board behind me? Uh, should you hear the alarm, please? Are they not? Oh, right. They were. <laughs> right, thank you, Libby. So those are the uh, fire <laughs> regulations on the screen behind me. If you hear uh, a fire alarm, please make sure you know where your nearest exit is and we meet under the canopy at Waitrose just over there. So please make sure you know your nearest exit. Uh, please also, could you check your phones are on silent or turned off? And count councillors, please make sure that your card is firmly into the console so that you can be heard on the webcast. Uh, members of the public, can I just remind you that this is not a public meeting. It's a meeting we hold in public. Um, we look forward to your comments at public speaking, but apart from that, we'd ask you not to take part in the debate, please. Let's move on then to the item. Oh, I must introduce the officers first of all. If somebody could put on a light. Are we off? Right, I can't see. So, on my far right is Lewis Jones from the legal team. Uh, directly to, ahead of me, to my right slightly, is Louise Yandel, who is the team leader for the Southern Area. We have Olivia Gorham, who's presenting uh, two applications, I think, tonight, and Elizabeth Sims, our head of planning. So, if we move straight on, then, to the matters in hand, the minutes of the last meeting, they have been laid out for the last half an hour. Are you quite content that I sign them as a true record of the meeting of the 6th of June? Thank you very much. Moving on then to apologies for absence, Emma. Yes, we have apologies from councillors Inchbold, Mulliner and Isherwood. Thank you. I think, um, excuse me. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, so we, we have apologies from councillors Stephen Mulliner and councillors uh, Councillor Peter Isherwood, sorry. And a very, a very <laughs> warm say. welcome, <laughs> Councillor Inchbold. Um, sorry. Uh, any disclosures of interest before the meeting, Emma? None before the meeting, but actually we have an interest from Councillor um, Carol King. Um, it's not, it's a, a non-pecuniary interest um, in application. What's the application? What's the number? Item 11, uh, she does not feel that at this site is owned by Waverley within the housing revenue account and therefore falls within her, her executive portfolio to avoid any perception of being a conflict confliction of interest in addition to clearing a non-pecuniary interest. She will draw from the chamber while this application is being considered. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Uh, questions by members of the public, do we have any? None received. Uh, questions from members? Uh, none received. In which case, let's move on to any, any relevant updates. Are there any relevant updates to government planning policy? There are none to update the committee on this evening. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Elizabeth. Can we move on then to item seven, our performance against um, government targets? And I think it's Elizabeth again who's going to uh, present this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, members, we've just distributed this uh, as, as an addendum, and apologies, you haven't had it in advance, um, but this is your regular update on the performance of development management against the, the government targets. Um, you'll see that uh, we continue to do very well on speed, and the, uh, the target in relation to quality, which is um, how many pills are lost in relation to um, all decisions, the the um, indicator that we've particularly been interested in, of course, is that in relation to majors. And if you see the figure at the bottom of, of that second table there, 8.33, that is our, our latest best estimate on how we're performing against the 10% threshold. So that is really good news because you'll recall about six months ago we were getting a little closer to it. But it does demonstrate, Chairman, the advantage of now having an adopted local plan in place because as members will see from the appeal decisions coming through, we're having great success in actually winning some major appeals now on the back of having a robust, up-to-date plan. Um, happy to take any questions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for Elizabeth at this stage? Always good to have some good news before the start of the meeting. 
Um, in which case, shall we move on then to the applications for planning permission? Uh, if there are any site inspections as a result of this meeting, they'll be held on the 31st of July at a time to be agreed at this meeting. So let's move straight on to our first application, application A1, WA 2018-0638, Hazelmere Recreation Ground Pavilion. And Louise, I think you're going to present this for us. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. The application is for a change of use of the building and land from a cricket pavilion and recreation ground, which is in use class D2, to a mixed-use cricket pavilion, recreation ground and children's nursery, which would be a mixed-use um, class D1 and D2, together with alterations to the elevations and the provision of fencing. The site is located on the east of Old Hazelmere Road and to the north of Scotland Lane. The site is currently in use of a sports pavilion set within Hazelmere Recreation Ground. Surrounding the recreation ground, the site is residential in character. The building is currently used as a sports pavilion. These top photos show the south elevation of the building. The bottom photos show the western rear elevation of the building. These photographs show the northern flank elevation of the building taken from within the recreation ground. These photographs are from within the site, looking towards um, the, the boundaries. Um, the first top two photographs are of the western boundary, which is the boundary with Old Hazelmere Road, and you will note the densely hedged border. And the bottom two photographs are the northern boundary, which is the boundary with the closest residential property, September Lodge. This final photograph that shows the existing car park on the site, which is to the south of the existing building. These are the um, floor plans. The existing layout would be amended to facilitate the, the use of the building for both a sports pavilion and a nursery, and this would include the conversion of one of the free changing rooms into a storage area and altered kitchen, along with altered toilet areas. These are the existing and proposed elevation. Um, the only elevations that are proposed to be altered are the northern elevation and the western elevation. As you can see um, from the images in front of you, the alterations would be the extension of the canopy area along the western elevation, which is at the rear here, along with the insertion of a door, and that would lead to the rear amenity space associated with the building, and the closing up of a door on the northern elevation. In addition to this, um, some fencing is also proposed, and this is a mixture of closed boarded and open railing fencing. The closed boarded fencing would be positioned along the boundary here with Old Hazelmere Road, although you will note that this area between the fence and the road itself is the dense hedging, which is proposed to be retained. And closed boarded fencing along the boundary with September Lodge. And the railing type fencing would be positioned to the side of the building here and here and that would be open in character, so if you're in the recreation ground, you would be able to see through into the nursery buildings. In conclusion, officer, uh, officers have looked um, at the various planning issues, and the matters of principle and technical opinion are the impact on sports, and members should have regard to the fact that Sport England have been consulted on the proposal and have not raised an objection. Um, a, you will note a previous application was refused on the loss of sports facilities, um, but having regard to the retention of two changing rooms on site, Sport England are now happy with this proposal and have not raised an objection. The impact on heritage, ancient woodland, the effect on the SPAs and biodiversity, all of which officers are considered to be satisfied with. The impact on highways, um, office members should note that there is a large public car park which serves the recreation ground which both these um, Surrey County Highways and officers are satisfied would be sufficient to serve the proposal. And then the matters of judgment for members this evening are the design and impact on visual amenity. As you saw from the presentation, the alterations to the building are relatively minor in scale and the fence would be obscured by existing landscaping. The acceptability of the nursery use, officers consider that the compatibility of the two uses as a nursery and a sports pavilion would work well together. And finally, the impact on residential amenity. And as the alterations to the building are relatively minor, um, there are no impacts in terms of 
loss of outlook, visual amenity or loss of privacy to the neighbour. And in terms of noise and disturbance, the site is already a recreation ground and is already used for children's play. So we are satisfied in that respect. Members may also be aware that this building is owned by Waverley. However, the committee are reminded that the decision this evening should be made on material planning, con sorry, material planning considerations only and not matters that relate to our estates team. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Louise. As I say, this is subject to public speaking. And could I ask Mr. Gareth David, please, to come forward first? I think uh, Emma probably has explained, but if you make yourself comfortable first, the four minutes will not start until you press the large button at the bottom of the console. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you this evening. As you already know, my name is Gareth David. I and my family have lived in Old Hazelmere Road, opposite the pavilion, for 26 and a half years. I'm speaking today on behalf of the six households most directly affected by this unwelcome proposal, namely the house adjacent to the pavilion, September Lodge, and five houses along the stretch of Old Hazelmere Road between Park Road and Scotland Lane. You'll no doubt have seen the individual written objections which we've made to this and to the earlier proposals for change of use of the pavilion building. In summary, we're all deeply concerned by the implications of this proposal on our quiet and peaceful neighbourhood. I'd like to focus my brief remarks on two principal concerns we have regarding this proposal, namely parking and noise. But I'll also touch on a broader concern over making inappropriate commercial use of a community facility. Our foremost concern relates to parking and to the traffic issues which will arise if this proposal is approved. Whilst there is admittedly an adequate car park at the Scotland Lane end of the recreation ground, it is abundantly obvious that parents and carers arriving with young children will never use it unless forced to do so. We have seen for years that tennis club and bowls club members park their cars in Old Hazelmere Road and Park Road rather than walk a few hundred yards from the dedicated car parking spaces at the Scotland Lane end of the recreation ground. What we now face is the twice daily headache of 35 or so cars all arriving in a short space of time, the slamming of car doors, raised voices and the hazard of young children being ushered up a narrow road with no pavement. Roads such as the lower part of Old Hazelmere Road, that is between the junctions of Park Road and Hill Road, and the upper section of Museum Hill, are already a hazard, with two cars unable to pass each other safely on Old Hazelmere Road, and Museum Hill made effectively single lane by the constant line of parked cars that are present. And the same applies to College Hill, by the way, the other road which would be most used to access the uh, pavilion from the town. This hazard will become even more acute with the twice daily influx of vehicles whose drivers will all no doubt be in a great hurry to deposit or collect their offspring and have few concerns for the sensitivities of local residents. Noise disturbance, of course, would not simply be confined to this twice daily coming and going of a large number of vehicles. The outdoor play area envisaged in this proposal to the rear of the pavilion building will cause considerable disturbance in what I've already pointed out is a quiet and peaceful residential area. I work as a freelance writer and have a first floor office in our house immediately opposite the pavilion, so I have great fears of day-long disturbance to my work and peace caused by the rolling playtimes envisaged in this proposal. Finally, I'd remind you that this building is covered by the 2015 Deed of Dedication, which requires the whole of the recreation ground, including buildings such as the pavilion, to be retained for public community events. That cannot include its commercial use, such as is being proposed. By all means, consider the pavilion's use as a new scout hut, which would be a genuine community use in line with the deed of dedication and meet what I understand is a local need. But I urge you to continue to reject its commercial use and say no to a development that would cause a high degree of disturbance, noise and traffic congestion and destroy forever the tranquility of our neighbourhood. Thank you. Could I just ask you to press the button again? Thank you very much, Mr David. Um, could I, yes, thank you. Uh, could I ask now Mr. Michael Walsh, who is a supporter of this application, to come forward? Uh, 
and the rules are exactly the same for you. Your four minutes will not begin until you press the large button, the long button at the bottom of the, the console. Madam Chairman, can I, can I, sorry, I'll interrupt you, but we won't start you four minutes. Can you just make sure your mic is a bit further up towards you? Otherwise, we might yes, have difficulty sir. hearing you. Thank you very much indeed. Can you hear me? Yes. No. Um, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for agreeing to listen to me. Um, as you probably know, I represent an entity called Hazemere Recreation Limited, which is the body that owns a leasehold interest in the pavilion uh, that has a 75-year lease from Waverley Borough Council that started towards the end of, uh, well, the end of uh, 1993. Um, I also represent Hazemere Recreation Association, which is an unincorporated um, association that was originally set up at the time the pavilion was constructed, which at the time was due to be a sports body representing the interests of Hazemere Cricket Club, Hazemere Bowls Club, Hazemere Lawn Tennis Club, um, Hazemere Youth Football Club, and the Heights School at uh, Hazemere. Um, until recently, I was chairman of Hazemere Cricket Club. Uh, I'm now um, being promoted, I think it's called promoted, to president of uh, Hazemere Cricket Club. Well, I suspect that just means I've got more chance of being shot. Um, those of you that know the history of Hazemere Sports Clubs, and in particular the um, recreation ground at Hazemere, should clearly be aware that its use is entirely for the playing of sports. Um, there is no commercial business carried on within the pavilion. The reason why... Oh, and if I can also explain, since formation of the Sports Association, the only entity left that supports the cost of maintaining the building and paying for everything, is the cricket club. Um, so it's a matter of economics that we have to do something to generate income. The, the costs of running the pavilion um, and the related parts of it are just over £10,000 a year. Now, I'm not aware of any sports club, even a big one, that can raise £10,000 through its membership or through annual gifts or, or, or from any source. So we have had to look to other ways of generating, it's not so much generating income, it's more a case of generating money to contribute towards an existing fixed amount of expenditure, which is where the Hazemere Montessori School comes in, uh, which obviously has an excellent reputation in the education sector. And I would say is a vital community um, entity. So it's not a case of X moving in with Y, it's a case of trying to find a place for a, a vital educational interest to carry on its uh, business. Oh dear. Uh, how long? Have we got a few? You have 30 seconds. 30 seconds, right. Um, I, so I think probably you're, you're aware of the history of um, Hazemere Cricket Club. Um, we have struggled for Hazemere Cricket Club, have struggled for the past four or five years. Um, and since the preparatory school closed, we've basically been left high and dry, with luckily the remains of a bequest, but not much money to help pay for it. This is why we urgently seek the arrangement with the nursery school. Uh, I think that's probably all I need to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Okay. Uh, members, over to you. Oh, sorry, Mr. Walsh, could I ask you just to touch that long button ah, again sorry. to turn yourself off? Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. So, members, over to you. Councillor Knowles. 
thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Um, uh, there's a number of issues which do concern me that were raised uh, by Mr. David, uh, particularly about the truck, the parking, and the traffic, um, and the car park. Officers very quickly said there's a car park to the south. They didn't say right at the other end of the field. It's a long way to the south. And that is the full length of the cricket field pitch, actually. Um, and people do park along that piece of road. Now, I, I did raise this earlier. I had an email from an officer saying, oh, well, there'll be no more traffic. Well, they play cricket on a Saturday one day a week, not Monday to Friday, coming and going twice. So that is clearly not true. There will be a considerable difference in the amount of traffic. And Mr David makes reference to the noise disturbance. And I note on page 12 of our agenda, Waverley Borough Council's environmental health note that there is likely to be increased disturbance for local residents, but not enforceable under a statutory nuisance. So these are a matter of concern and how are they to be addressed? Because although we've had, had a very nice note from, as an additional paper from <coughs> Surrey County Council, I think officers keep telling us we mustn't consider non-planning matters and that is a non-planning matter. And therefore, what are we looking at? We're looking at the noise disturbance and the traffic problems that have been highlighted lighted by Mr. David, and they cause me considerable concern. Thank you, Councillor Knowles. Councillor King. Thank you very much, Chairman. It's a really difficult one, this one, to think about. I use Scotland Lane and um, Old Hazemere Road on a very frequent basis. It's dangerous, and in fact, I often use the car park there. Uh, coming out of that car park, the sight lines are appalling. Uh, and uh, the traffic that goes roaring up, old, um, up Scotland's Lane is going to pay scant attention. You can't see the, en the entrance and the exit from that car park. And I actually am concerned about the safety of drivers that use that. If you know it, you do have to be very careful as you come out of there. But the Scotland Lane has become a rat run. It's incredibly busy. Uh, I myself had to back halfway down it the other day because you can't get through for parked vehicles and you have to let people through. I do, my concern is on traffic, I, I have to say. When the people are using the playing field all the way along Old Hazemere Road, it's parked solid from one end to the other. Uh, and it is dangerous. It, it, it's such a tricky place to come in and out. And the suggestion that anybody might go on a bicycle, you need to be jolly fit with a child on a bike to get up those hills. Thank you. I have to say it's one of the pleasures of life. I've never tried and I don't intend to start now. Um, officers, would you like to come back on that? I take it there is no issue from, as far as Surrey is concerned with the access and in ingress to the car park? Yes, yeah, Surrey have um, looked at the application and they are satisfied that safe um, access can be achieved to the development. And the car park contains um, 33 car parking spaces, which um, Surrey County Council are satisfied is a suitable number of spaces to accommodate the nursery and the existing uses on the site. Um, Surrey County Council have recommended a condition requiring a, a travel plan, um, which you will note from your agenda, um, and that will be secured prior to the commencement of the development. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Councillor Edwards? Uh, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> this is a very difficult uh, application um, to judge. However, I would say, uh, on a personal point of view and as a councillor, that um, pr education provision is very, very important to the community. And uh, we've already heard from a number of sources how important um, this particular uh, school is. Uh, of course, there's going to be noise. Children make noise, you know, that's how it is. Um, the pavilion is underused at the present time. Um, I know the pavilion very well. I've used the services there. Uh, I've done the quizzes we used to run with the uh, football club. Uh, so I know it quite well. Um, the roads around there are sometimes 
full of parking. Um, but there's a park, car park provision, and I note that the Hazelmere Town Council have approved this uh, application, subject to um, limiting parking on the, on the old Hazelmere Road. Um, we need to use facilities that we have. We can't build any more. It's not possible. It, 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 you know, we haven't got the money to do that. But what we can do, we can use the, the buildings we currently have, the assets we currently have, to address the needs of the community. Uh, I know some people, and particularly the residents uh, that have already spoken and, and replied to the um, application, uh, have issues. But we're talking up to 50 children here, and that's important. So um, I'm going to support this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. I think the issues are very clear on this application. Does anybody wish to raise a new point, Councillor Adams? <clears throat> yes, I mean, w we have to accept change, I think, and all residents have to accept change. Um, coming from a village which is uh, almost uh, stationary for uh, every morning and evening from two schools, um, uh, you know, I think uh, the number of children here uh, is very similar probably to the number of um, children in the very small school at, at uh, Tilford. Um, and yes, they do park all the way along the green and all the way along one side of the green, so effectively making a single track road. Um, but the fact is, I can't see this building being sustained in any other way. And it's obviously an asset to the community. Um, so this would seem to be um, the least worst option. Thank you to Councillor Adams. Do any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Round? <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Maybe I could bring one new point, although I'm not sure it's a planning consideration, and that is when we considered this in Hazemere, we were uh, worried that about small, small children, these are little children, this is preschool children, um, being in uh, a place that's obviously a bar. And I don't know if that's uh, an old-fashioned view to take, but I can certainly believe in the past one might have thought that. Maybe it can be hidden. I agree we have a need for these spaces. I agree it's going to be hassle with drop-off and pick-up. Indeed, I used to have regular Italian lessons down at the uh, youth campus in Haysmere where the scout hut is at the entrance with all these children there and it's madness but then they hadn't got much space. I think the car parking is more than adequate provided they use it but as everyone else has said I find it very difficult because I can see pros and I can see cons. Another point is it'll be very nice for children even though they're rather small to see a sports field and realise they might like to use it one day because this is a, with the um, loss of many sports grounds, particularly in state schools, which I think is very sad, they're spending probably too much time on, in cyberspace than on the ground. However, I find it difficult. I can wait to see what everyone else says. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Round. Councillor Piper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just one point. Um, I'm not sure whether um, I can make it with regard to this, but as Waverley owns the whole of the recreation ground and the area that is under the application tonight, uh, could they not consider doing something about the visibility displays from the, um, the entrance and the exit from that car park, which would encourage you know, parents dropping off their children um, to, more, to use it more safely. Thank you, Councillor Piper. I'll get uh, Louise to come back on that one. And on any other matters, does any other councillor wish to speak before? Right, so we'll just answer that one and then I'll take you, Councillor Inchball. Uh, Louise? Um, as landowner, Waverley could, of course, look at that. Um, for this planning application in particular, it's not something that we would be able to require um, by condition or, or in any other way um, because it doesn't meet the test of necessity. Um, but, of course, as landowner, then, then they can look into doing any improvements that they wish. I think that's perhaps something the local members should be taking up outside this meeting and seeing if we can do it, make some improvement. Councillor Richbold. Chairman, uh, as chairman of the licensing committee, could I assure Councillor Round that the provisions of the Licensing Act will be rigorously enforced? 
I'm delighted to hear it, and I'm sure the three-year-olds at the Montessori Nursery will be too. Um, I, I don't really want to prolong a discussion on, on the, the bar, because it's not really part of this application. Does anybody have anything else directly related to the application? Uh, do the officers wish to add anything more, or can we move straight to the recommendation? Straight to the recommendation. So the recommendation is, as in your uh, papers, that subject to conditions 1 to 8, on pages 28 to uh, 30 of the agenda, and the informatives 1 to 3, which are on pages 30 to 31 of your agenda, that permission be granted. Could I see all those, please, in favour of granting permission? Okay, that's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And those against the recommendation? 1, seven, And any abstentions? In that case, permission is granted. Thank you very much indeed. Right, moving on now then to item A2, which is also subject to public speaking. <laughs> you can't get out of these chairs quietly, don't worry. <laughs> we're, we're so used to it, that's why I was waiting. It really is uh, very difficult. Right, item A2 then. Um, we'll call you at some point, sir, but you, you're very welcome to sit. No, no, don't, don't go all the way back now. You sit there. That's perfectly okay. But Yes, far too keen, but we're, we're glad to see it. Right, moving on then to item A2, which is uh, the change of use at Hazelmere Post Office, 3 West Street in Hazelmere. And it's Olivia, I think, Olivia Gorham, who's going to present this to us. Thank you, Chairman. The application site is located to the southwest of West Street. Could I um, ask you just to sit a little more close, close to the yes. microphone to be a little bit more faint there? Thank you very much. Um, the site comprises the eastern side of a single-storey building, um, which is currently in use as a post office. In here. Um, the western side of the building, which is not within the application site, is in A3 restaurant use um, and is currently occupied by Ask Italian. The entrance to the post office is along West Street. The adjacent building along West Street to the southeast is currently occupied by an estate agent um, with what appears to be residential accommodation at first floor level. Uh, the surrounding properties, including those to the southeast of the site and on the opposite side of West Street, feature residential units at first floor level. The photo shows the front and side elevation um, and the portion of the building which is occupied by ASK. The application proposes the change of use um, of the existing A1 retail use to a mixed-use building comprising A1 retail and A4 drinking establishment uses. The retail space and post office would be located to the front of the building and the wine bar would be to the rear. A mezzanine floor is also proposed to provide additional seating for the wine bar. There are no proposed changes to the front elevation. Um, the only external alterations proposed are two roof lights in the southeast elevation, as shown in the drawing. The below photo shows the residential units to the southeast of the site, opposite the side elevation where the roof lights are proposed. The section plan shows the mezzanine floor um, and the roof lights, which you will see, are high level. Um, in conclusion, officers consider that the proposal would be acceptable with regard to the design and impact on the conservation area, impact to residential amenity, and the impact to Hazelmere Town Centre. Um, the matters of principle and technical opinion are the impact on Hazelmere Town Centre, impact on highways, impact on archaeological potential, um, the SPAs and biodiversity, and the matters for members' judgment are the design and impact on the conservation area and impact on residential amenity. 
Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Olivia. Uh, could I ask now Mr Douglas Howard to uh, address us? He is a supporter of the application. And again, four minutes from when you start speaking. It's not on the clock. Sorry. Okay, no problem. I, I promise you, Emma will give you your full four fine. minutes. Don't worry about that. Family name known well. Um, good evening, Madam Chair, Committee. and officers. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight on um, support of this application. Um, hopefully the um, points raised by the officers and the application speaks for itself. I just wanted to bring to your attention the post office has um, operated in the town since 1906, but sadly for Hazelmere in the last 20 years it's deteriorated to dilapidated state and neither the post office nor the landlord had any intention of um, solving um, the um, challenges they had and the post office became um, an economic disaster. The post office um, gave a notice for closing for um, a little over two years um, with many um, backed community um, supporters to try and find um, a different solution so Hazemere wouldn't lose its main post office. Um, we bring this application today um, with an exciting mixed retail usage which maintains a post office operation in the post office, brings uh, jobs to the town, um, brings uh, um, new businesses to the town and overall um, uh, is, in our opinion, a, a workable, economic and exciting um, solution. Um, I do want to just uh, cover off um, a couple of the concerns that were raised by um, objectors. One, um, why does the post office have to get smaller? I want to raise this, I want to cover this on two points. Firstly, the post office isn't getting smaller if you look at the look at the um, where the counter currently sits in the front portion of the of the building and now the and now the um, new plans opens up the whole use of the downstairs and increases the space with the mezzanine floor um, which means that during um, busy times we are much um, more able to manage um, queuing systems um, to maintain people um, shopping and queuing within the premises. Um, secondly, the number of, of um, counters has been designed by post office and to date I have no option to make that anymore. That's based on footfall and its current um, transactions. Secondly, uh, there was a raise of noise and disturbance to local residents. Um, before putting this application in, we spoke to um, all of the local residents to explain what we were trying to do and that we would bring together craft um, beers, wines and spirits from the local area. And the bar, whilst I accept the classification of the bar, is a um, tasting room to be able to connect people with product uh, that they wouldn't normally know. know. Um, we haven't applied for a music licence, we don't have an intention of playing loud music and um, as community and um, local um, residents ourselves who understand the importance of um, good community relations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Howard. Right, members, over to you who'd like to start on this one. Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Chairman. I uh, fully uh, endorse this uh, application. I think it's... Uh, uh, a, realist, a realistic view of what's needed in the town. Uh, it continues uh, the uh, presence of the post office, which is a much needed asset to the town. And um, that's all I can say, really. It's, it's a, a real positive on a in, in a business sense to our community, and we should all, I think we should support it. Thank you. Thank you to Councillor Edwards, Councillor King, and then... Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, oh, big post offices are out of date. Oh, they don't work, and they don't work in communities like ours. Uh, we now have three small post offices within several miles of each other in the Hazemere area. 
that really work well. And they are mixed-use premises, post office supported by a shop of whatever sort. And I think the int introduction of a wine bar is going to be an interesting thing, but nevertheless, we will see. I can imagine standing queuing at the post office and going, having a drink. <laughs> Thank you. It'll make queuing for Christmas stamps a little more pleasant, won't it? Um, Councillor Round. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, too, support this absolutely. I think, the, uh, without being too personal about it, the Howard family ought to be congratulated. They have very, um, uh, they're very good at doing things in the, in the local community, and they're to be thanked for, if you like, going a long way towards saving the post office. Um, I'm not worried about the wine bar. I don't think it's going to be a conventional wine bar. It's more a case of a, a place to sell local craft beers and other things that you might not normally get in the wine bar. And certainly, this is a, a very good application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Round. Councillor Knowles? Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I, I also support this because... It, there's a desperate need to retain a, a post office in, in Hazelmere. Um, I did look at the, the chart, the, the drawings a little earlier when, when, it, when it came in, and the post office looks very small, but I think we've been reassured that Post Office Limited, or whoever runs that part, will be happy enough, because uh, I know at the moment they drag things off out to the back. So where they're going to drag things off to now, I don't know. But as long as the post office are happy, and there isn't any drunkenness. I don't see any problem. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nels. Any other councillor wishing to contribute? No? Olivia, do you wish to add any, anything more? Are you quite, quite content if we just go straight to the recommendation? In which case, can I take councillors to the recommendation? Very brief recommendation that subject to conditions one to two in your papers and informative one that permission be granted. Can I see all those, please, in favour of granting permission? Uh, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. In that case, permission is granted. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Right. Moving on then to the final application, this is Olivia again who's presenting this one, uh, WA 2018-0765, the Pavilion Community Room Fieldway in Hazelmere. So I ask you to present this one to us, please, Olivia. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application is brought before the area committee as Waverley Borough Council is the applicant. Um, Firstly, I would just draw members' attention to the update sheet, which includes an additional paragraph on car parking. Um, the application site is located to the west of Pathfields, a footpath accessed from Hazelmere High Street and Church Lane. The site lies within a housing estate and is surrounded by residential properties. Um, the aerial view shows the footpath from the High Street to Church Lane, um, which also has an access point from Chestnut Avenue Car Park. The site comprises a detached single-storey building currently in D2 use as a community room, shown in the photos. The application proposes the change of use of the building from D2 use as a community room to B1 office use. The proposal would not involve any external alterations. Um, in conclusion, officers consider that the proposal would be acceptable with regard to the new economic development design and impact on residential amenity. Um, the matters of principal and technical opinion are new economic development, impact on highways, effect on the SPA and biodiversity. Matters for members' judgment are design and impact on visual amenity and impact on residential amenity. Thank you, Chairman. 
Thank you, Olivia. This is not subject to, thank you very much, public speaking. So over to you, members. Councillor Knowles. Thank you. Um, the only concern I do have is over parking, which is referred to now on the update sheet and saying there's a shortfall of three spaces. But then goes on to say um, that they hasn't got them at the moment, but then the room isn't used at the moment, so nobody needs to park. So that's hardly relevant. The fact of the matter is that there isn't any. It's only accessible by a footpath either way. Now, the, the other problem is there's a place called George Denier Close, which is on that map, which is closer to this than the car park. And we've had problems recently at Waverley with people parking there, and that is an access-only road. That has got the signs at the start, so it's a criminal offence to, to drive into there and park. It's not under the, the local authority, it's still under the police. And that should be enforced rigorously for whoever is going to use this, and that should be made quite clear. Uh, that doesn't appear to have been included in this report, but that is the clear, the nearest piece of road to park on, but it's quite clearly signed. Unfortunately, people are ignoring it at, at the present time. That is the only reservation that I have. Thank you. Yes, I think Louise would like to just come back on that point. Um, so I just want to make a couple of points. Um, the first point is that the sort of existing parking enforcement issues um, aren't a matter for this application. They would be a matter for the Highway Authority. Um, and secondly, um, the existing use of the building is highly material and members, um, when considering the current application, they should be comparing it to the impact of the existing use if it was in use because that is the lawful use and it could be used as a community room as an, at any time, although I appreciate that at this moment it is closed. Thank you. Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Chair. This is a, uh, I think it's part of the Waverley strategy to, to get best use, use out of the buildings that we, that we have uh, within the community, and this isn't used, okay? Uh, so uh, we should be using it for whatever reason that we can find. I, I understand that they may have somebody uh, ready to go into this building once it's... Um, once it's uh, been re re refurbished, um, you know, can we use these assets as much as possible, please? And uh, I, I think this is a good, a good uh, uh, application, and I shall, I shall support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Does anybody else wish to comment on this application before we move to the recommendation, Councillor Adams? Um, I see it's next door to the nursery school there. I mean, the land around it um, will just remain under Waverley's control, presumably. Um, what, what happens to that is just the building that we're changing, isn't it, for use? But, I mean, are we providing any additional land for the people who are going to hopefully use this building? If you turn your microphone Sorry. off, I'll see if I can get an answer from the officers. Louise? So in terms of the planning issues, um, the site itself is outlined in red on the site location plan um, that's up on the screen in front of you now. So it only, the application only relates to the building itself. Um, the wider question is not a planning question. That's, that's a question for the Council's Estates team. Thank you. Right. Does anybody else wish to contribute any... Members, officers, in that case, shall we move straight to the recommendation? The recommendation, as in your papers, is that subject to condition one and informative one, permission for the change of use be granted. Can I see all those in favour of granting permission, please? Yeah, that's unanimous. Thank you very much indeed, members. That permission is granted. And uh, that is the end of the meeting. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>